the bat, yeah, I'm swinging for the fence. Got the home crowd loud, gotta make them proud. Gunning for the win, get the dub, get a top spot. Can they day fight hard, got it on lock. Let me give it all that I got. Boginaka, my name is Sarah Nangama. We're here at New South Wales Waratahs HQ. Welcome to my world. So I compete in the Super W competition. It's the premier women's 15 comp here for Rugby Union. What I love about this club is that there's just such a rich history here. Um, the girls that are here in this squad, like they are just such strong contenders and I really believe that I play with the best players in this country. So um, to me, to be able to play a small part in that and be able to don the jersey is something that is um, really special to me. And like, I have a lot of pride in like my family name as well. And I grew up adoring my brothers and the legacy that they created around our surname. It feels cool to be able to contribute to that um, under the New South Wales Waratahs banner. So when we get here to training, um, there's a couple of things that we need to do. And the first one is to go up and see our staff. We were having a coffee that's never coming. I know, I'll, I'll call you, I'll call you. you have, you've said that to me for four weeks now. <laughs> Being a semi-professional athlete is very hard work. <laughs> Can you please strap my ankle? I'm getting my ankle straps. Um, earlier this season, I had a bit of a stressy through it. And so I missed out on the opening two games of the season, which was far from ideal. I started playing rugby in 2011. Um, I heard about Rugby Sevens being played at the Olympics for the first time at the Rio Olympics. And um, my school went crazy trying to recruit talent so we could create a team and get involved. And um, basically through a gala day, I played my first Sevens game, went on to play New South Wales School Girls, which was like an all good team. Um, and then basically after Sevens finished, they said, if you want to keep playing rugby, you need to go find a 15s club because 15s happens all year round, whereas seven is like quite specific to summer. Representing Australia A at the Oceania tournament in Fiji was really special. I felt like it was quite a full circle moment. I'm an Australian born Fijian, so being able to go back um, to where my parents are from and where our bloodline runs from um, was really special and it was quite emotional, particularly the first time being able to put on the yellow jersey and sing the anthem in Fiji. It was special and it's a fond memory that I hold on to quite closely. Well, well, there's only one op to do testing. Yeah. One day, this is it. Welcome to Hell Week. Bench, chin up. We just finished from gym testing, so basically Ugh. it was your max squat, your max bench press, as well as your max chin ups. Um, it's been a while since we've done it, so the girls are super pumped, and you probably heard them screaming a little bit because a couple of us got some PB. So Hell Week is off to a good start. Morning guys, it's now 6.30 in the morning. Every Thursday, um, I come into the ABC studio to record a radio podcast called Can You Be More Pacific? My co-host is Dean Halliter and he's an absolute legend. So let's go upstairs and record this week's show. They said play rugby. It'll be fun, they said. Good morning, crew. Miss Blobinaka and welcome to another episode of Can You Be More Pacific? My name is Sarah Nangama and as always, I'm joined by my media bestie, Dean Hallitow. My burst onto the media scene has really come about in the past 10 months. ABC offered me an opportunity to co-host a radio show with Dean Hallitow called Can You Be More Pacific? And it was cool because I'd never had any experience in the space. I said yes. And basically on the back of that, they extended me a TV opportunity um, to host that Pacific Sports Show, which was cool. I did that alongside to Tough Pilota now. And then, you know, I just had my head down doing all my work with ABC and Channel 9 caught a whiff of it um, and reached out to me asking if I'd be interested in doing the Blood Slow Game 3. They said yes, and I'm so grateful I did that. On my debut, I got to do it alongside Sonny Bill Williams, which is something I won't be forgetting anytime soon. And um, basically from that, they were quite impressed and have continued to offer me work. So because of that exposure, I've been afforded everything else I've been given. Well, it's now nine o'clock and I'm at my full-time job. The struggle is real. <laughs> The struggle is so real, trying to hold down the athlete life as well as um, a full-time job. But um, as you mentioned, the women's 15s code here in Australia is still a semi-professional sport, which means we need to be able to hold full-time jobs or a job in order to support ourselves financially. The juggling act is, is pretty hard, to be honest. Like, you know, you guys have been with me throughout last night and today. Like, you see how late we train till, how early my day start, and I have to back it up the next day having to do or live this way for as long as I have, which has been like the past five years. Um, you just you just learn to hustle because at the end of the day, you want to succeed as an athlete and you'll make any sacrifices you need to to be able to achieve it. My upbringing was definitely 
chaotic, but there was a lot of love in it. My parents separated when I was quite young, um, but my siblings and I are quite close because of, I guess, the adversity that we faced at a very young age. Um, but despite my parents' differences, um, there was a lot of love and I spent a lot of time actually with my bumbo and my papa. Um, they, they had a heavy hand in bringing us all up and um, yeah, I'm just really grateful for them because I feel like life would have looked quite different without them. I love going back to Fiji. It's so special. From the moment you land in the plane and you look around, like everyone looks like you and it, it's special. You just have this strong sense of belonging and that's definitely what I feel. It's also great to see family. Being a Fijian to me means absolutely everything. It's the core of my identity. And, you know, when I think about what I was like quite younger and being able to own my Fijian identity, I probably didn't feel like I could because I didn't speak the mother tongue. But now that I've come into my own and I feel like I have such a deeper and stronger connection to my culture, um, my identity is pivotal in my day-to-day -day life. And I think that um, now when I, see the reflection of myself in the mirror, I take so much pride in like the colour of my skin, the texture of my hair and it's, it screams, I'm a Fijian woman and like I'm, I'm so proud of it. So I feel like it's been a journey being able to embrace my identity, um, but I couldn't be prouder of where I am right now.